good getting internet. Um, so I'm going to do a let's analyze today. I have mostly cracked the uh, memory card save format for Wild Arms at this point. And well, I want to do a couple of updates. My kitties are fine. Um, so those of you may have seen that uh, Boo was in the emergency room last week, uh, last Sunday for me. Uh, this is only Saturday, October 19th, so it's the day before this goes live. Um, Boo's fine. Uh, she even had a, her regular vet appointment today, and everything seems fine. They're going to do a dental cleaning on Tuesday, but otherwise it's fine. It's in and zone, zone being right here. Perfectly fine, no issues. Um, you can't tell from the background, I have rearranged. Uh, some of you may have noticed the green screen behind me for the last couple of videos that I've just been in this position. I still have boxes, as you can tell from like there, there, not here though, this isn't a box. Um, so behind me is my gaming table. That's where board gaming and role-playing happen now. Um, the couch that I used to be sitting at is over to my right, uh, your left, and yeah. Um, this is my new PS1. Oh, I'm sorry for blocking your view zone. Uh, this is my new PS1. It's one of the baby PS1s. Uh, they do, in fact, work with PS2 adapter, and I've actually gotten this to work. There's no issues with it. Um, I just didn't use it for the last couple of videos because I didn't really have time. And it doesn't make sense for me to use a PS1 for the Let's Analyze videos, at least not yet. Um, let's see, what else did I want? I have an art book for Wild Arms 1 now. So I actually showed both the PS1 and the art book in a previous video, but that video was heavily corrupted by OBS. Uh, turns out there's a bug in OBS where if you are switching between scenes, which I was and I am going to do for this video, um, it causes an audio glitch where it just delays audio by a second each scene. So by the time that I was done with that video, I was five or six seconds off on audio. It was completely unwatchable. I couldn't even watch it when I was reviewing it. And yeah, I just dumped the entire video and started over from scratch. So that's part of the reason why my memory is getting a little foggy when it comes to these videos. It's because I've done this eight times. Oy. And each video is very slightly different, so I don't necessarily remember what I did in one video versus another video versus another video. And yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, um, and people say that Zone isn't a shoulder kitty. He's mostly resting on my um, chair. He's a little bit rest and uh, mostly resting on the chair, maybe about 30% resting on this shoulder. And you can sort of see behind my neck, he's actually resting up against my back on the other side. So, um, what I want to talk about in this video was hex editing. So we saw a little bit of that in the first Let's Analyze Wild Arms, first and second, and I've had a lot more practice and a bit of a breakthrough. I'm going to show you, but I need to get the green screen up, which means that I need to get up, which means this kitty needs to not be on my shoulder. So I'm going to pause the recording and I'll be back. Believe it or not, it took a full half an hour for Zone to get off my shoulders. I didn't want to move him, he was very cute. Anyway, so, um, uh, let's see, first, in, hold on. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I had to uninstall and reinstall Notepad++ because I didn't want to blind everybody. So, um, something I should start with because I didn't do this before is explain what hexadecimal is. So, Computer objects are demonstrated in terms of binary. Hmm, pardon me. That is on or off, one or zero. So everything on a computer looks kind of like that. And so on. Um, this is very efficient for a computer because that's the way digital logic works is by on or off. Uh, but humans are not very good at reading that. So the way computers work is that everything's in terms of bits. Namely, each one of these digits, like that is one bit. 
4 bits consists of what's called a nibble. And yes, that is the actual term, believe it or not. A nibble is half of a byte. A byte is simply 8 bits or 2 nibbles. And the reason why this is important is that hexadecimal is an easier slash more compressed way of viewing fat. Fat. Sorry, I keep forgetting everything's mirror imaged for me. So it's an easier way of viewing that. So binary is what's called a base two number system. There's zero, there's one, that's it. The next digit is one zero. So it goes zero, one, one zero, one one, one zero zero, and so on. In fact, if we want to have leading digits, it looks like that. So that's one, two, Ah, three, four. Why is it so hard to type when other people are watching, even if it's just the camera? Five, and so on. So you can demonstrate up to two to the power of four. So we keep going. Six, seven, eight. I miscounted in there, didn't I? Yeah. Derp, derp. How about zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. Ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. This is assuming unsigned, and because it's going to bother me, oops. All right? Let me do that. Okay, so. And that, there we go. So, um, these are the number, any number that you can demonstrate in terms of a nibble. It's numbers from zero to 15, assuming unsigned. And I'll explain the signing thing in a moment. So, hexadecimal is a method of demonstrating a base 16 number system. So, we should mention binary. Ah. I had it spelled right to begin with. So actually I'm going to shorten things. Binary, decimal, hex. So this is zero. This is one, two, three. And this looks awfully familiar so far, right? Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is the digit 10. Not number 10, digit 10. We have to be very precise when it comes to hexadecimal. That's why I wanted to explain this. B, C, D, E, and F. So effectively, you can show, and this is what a nibble looks like. In binary, we've, and we still have 16 options no matter what, whether that is two to the fourth, which is 16. So that would be four digits of binary. Uh, in decimal, we have to use two digits to demonstrate this, and it's not an exact divisor because two to the power of what equals 10, the answer is not a whole number. And in hexadecimal, we have one digit that we need to explain. This is the reason why frequently when you're looking at um, data, it's actually encoded in some type of hexadecimal. It's much easier to do and much easier to read. Therefore, a byte is just another digit of hexadecimal. So if a nibble, remember nibble is, so we've got a bit, which is, 
the lowest common denominator for computing data, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, um, but effectively a single digit of binary. We have a nibble, which is four digits of binary or a single digit of hexadecimal. And then we have a byte. A byte is two nibbles, which means that's eight digits in binary or two digits in hexadecimal. That is the reason why when we open up our hexadecimal stuff, which can I zoom in? No, no, I cannot. One moment. Now that I'm back and having figured out how to make hexcomp2 in Biggin, um, so you all can read it. So each one of these represents one byte, as in the two of these combined, which um, hexcomp can't actually do. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, hexcomp can't actually do highlighting. This is a shareware program. That is to say that there's a 15 day trial and well, technically that wouldn't be shareware at that point because there's no, after the 15 days, it's not featureful at all. Um, this basically is demonstrating the difference between two different files in hexadecimal format. Uh, these two files, coincidentally, are two different saves of Wild Arms. So what I ended up doing was that I exported the file. So I know that you all have seen me do this before, but I'm just going to load this up really fast. Uh, that's the wrong folder. That's also the wrong folder. That is also the wrong folder. Great, I have to go find the data folder in one moment. I am using the pause feature so much in OBS today. So that's the reason why all right, that's how I'm getting these files, is that I'm actually opening up the memory card file. Memory card file is coming from either my PS1 here, as in, as I throw the memory card on the floor. I did not hit zone. Good. Zone's actually on top of my UPS right now, for reference. My memory card. This is the actual memory card that I use. Um, or the save file from RetroArch, which actually uses the exact same format as the export from my PS1. Or I should say, the export from the PS1 give me these individual files. I have to merge them together into a single memory card format. Anyway, oh wow, that looks weird on here. Is it just OBS being weird or is it? Okay, yeah, it's just OBS being weird for the zoom. Anyway. Oh, you can actually see a corner of my green screen. I must have knocked into it at some point. That works better. So, um, what was I saying? So, I export from memory card Rex. Uh, this file right here is actually this file up here. Um, it increments numbers, right, no, sorry. This file is this file right here. This is where it's incrementing a number at because it's weird. Right? Nope, nope, I was right to begin with. Ugh. So, this file here, this wild arms file 04, is this file down here. I just have it named with dot original so I can figure out after I've done some manipulation of things. And this might actually be the manipulated version. And then this file here, with the identifier wild arm 4, is this file up here, with the identifier wild arm 4. So what I've been doing is that these two saves are very similar to each other. Uh, the only real difference between the saves in this case is that I moved the proto wing. So for reference, this is before the last set of videos. I actually did the homework on this in advance and I thought about uploading this before the other videos, but decided that might be confusing. So. Um, this is from very shortly after I got the proto wing and all I did was, well, here, let me show you what I did. Make sure my audio is set to not go off the deep end because that would be bad. And because I'm still affected by the OBS bug, I'm going to pause then unpause after I switch scenes. Um, there is a way around that bug at the moment. I have to launch OBS as an administrator, but I did not do that in this case. All right, let's go ahead and launch my alarms. Okay, you're getting audio and I'm not. That's the way I want it. We're going to be doing a lot of fast forwarding for reference. And I'm not wearing my headphones because I'm technically on call at the moment for work. So I don't want to miss my phone ringing. 
Okay, so let's slow this down. So it is, oh no, we actually did save over file three, but this file right here, file four, this is, uh, we actually saved over all of these, didn't we? Oh well, anyway, I'll just demonstrate it for you right here. So what I did was really simple. Well, that's my thing. So I would load the game, walk out of Adelaide, Move over here, enter the proto wing, move it up about here, and stop. Then go back to Adelaide. And save. I even made sure that I stand, stood in the exact same spot in case if that mattered. That's all that I did. So. The differences were really interesting. Um, in my case, for these two, I actually ended up moving the proto wing diagonal, and that's going to come up in a moment. So the first thing is that this will highlight any of the differences between the files. And this one byte here is incrementing. Every time that I saved, I loaded up all of my saves at the time, it increments, which means that this is a counter for the number of times that you've saved the game. We have saved the game 54 hexadecimal times. So 54 hexadecimal, let me get calculator open, and better there, sure. So if we switch to hexadecimal, so we have 54 hexadecimal, that is 84 decimal, which is to say we have saved the game 84 times. That's really neat. I have no idea why it's keeping track of that, and I really wonder what happens if I save the game 255 times. And that is something we can test, by the way. So, um, what else do we have for differences? So, scrolling further, we've got this here. So, this hexadecimal area is starting to enter into Cecilia's name. If I would have to make a guess, this is probably the party member that's active. Because Rudy's active, whereas I think in the other save, Cecilia was active. I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, there's a lot of these that I haven't fully figured out. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. These are all of the spell names for reference. So if you actually rename the spells or rename the characters, you can. See, I told you there are four characters in Wild Arms 1. It's Rudy, Jack, Cecilia, and Hanpan. Anyway, um, at the end of all of these spell names, these are the stats. And this was something else that I did actually change between the two videos is that I I believe I used an apple on Cecilia or changed equipment or something like that. No, that's right. I changed equipment on characters. So these must represent something that I've changed, right? Well, turns out the answer is yes. This is what I've figured out. So this is starting at hexadecimal 16C0 location. So 16C0. So starting at this line and this byte right here. I have not figured out what these two bytes are. That's most of what I haven't figured out, in fact. I, for some reason, it's 2, 2, and 0. I don't know the significance of that, and I haven't changed it yet to try to find out. From here, we have the bytes 2600. 2600, I figured out, corresponds to level. So, I already closed calc, didn't I? So if we do 2.6, it corresponds with decimal 38. My characters were level 38 at the time, so that makes sense. Um, interesting fact, though, is that it handles larger levels. So what I mean by that is that this is two bytes worth. It's not one byte. Which is to say that one byte handles up to a maximum of level 255, assuming signed numbers. These are actually un uh, these are or, sorry, assuming unsigned numbers. These are actually signed, which means that technically you can actually reach level 127. And I have tried that; it works. The level doesn't do anything else, so it's not. Or, the only thing level dictates, if you do memory card editing, is that. Um, it's the amount of experience that you take to go up another level. 
which is going to be really useful when I figure out how leveling actually works in Wild Arms 1. That's going to be a different video, though. So next up, we have current and maximum hit points. So the current hit points are here. Now, you'll notice that it is two numbers, not one. So the way this works, and I have this over here, let me zoom in a bit, is that it's the first number plus the second number times 256. So what it is, so in this case, let me scroll back over. So we've got C20B. So we go back over to the calculator that I keep closing for some dumb reason. Go into hex mode. C2 plus, or sorry, so let me do this in decimal. It's going to be easier. So C2 is 194. Zero B is 11. So switching back over to decimal, 194 plus parent 11 times 256 is 3,010, which is how many hit points Rudy had at the time. So this is part of the reason why I was able to figure these out is that I knew how many hit points Rudy had. I just didn't know how it was displaying things. Um, it could have gone the other way around. That is to say that the, so if you think of it in terms of hex, uh, let me open this really fast. So if you think this in terms of hex, what we would say is that I actually have zero, B, C, two hit points, which is to say that this is the ones, this is the 16s, this is the, the um, 256s, and this is the whatever 16 to the fourth is, uh, that's the 1024s. So that's the equivalent of 30, 10. This is the ones, this is, no, this is the ones, this is the tens, this is the hundreds, and this is the thousands. It's the same type of thing, except Decimal is a base 10 system. Computers are going to use a base 2 system. And to make things easier for us, we're using a base 16 system. I know this is really confusing. It took me decades to get used to this. I, at one point in high school, I was able to think in like six or seven different number systems off the top of my head. Thank you, Academic Games. So anyway, continuing on. Let me zoom back out again. Um, so... We have this section. This section is MP. Rudy has zero MP. That makes sense. Whereas Jack, on the other hand, had uh, 84 in decimal, so like 100 and something MP. Why do I keep closing calculator? Um, so Jack must have had 132 MP. That makes sense. And Cecilia, I closed it again. Cecilia, excuse me, has over 256 MP. I can tell because there's some digit over here. Next up, we have got our stats. So this is strength. This is vitality. I believe we found strength before. It's just that I figured out what all the rest of them are. Sorcery. Um, I keep trying to call it resilience. It's not resilience. Response. Thank you, me. Uh, response. And attack power. So this is where I found out that Wild Arms 1 doesn't do a calculation for attack power. It's actually storing attack power. What this means is that when you equip a weapon, it adds the weapon's attack power to your attack, or to your strength stat. That's fine. And then when you unequip a weapon, it decreases it from the strength stat. What most games do, on the other hand, is calculate your attack stat based off of strength plus weapon power. It doesn't actually store it separate. I really don't know why they have it stored separately, but what it does mean is that you can manipulate the two stats independently of each other, which is bizarre. Uh, the same holds true for defense power, magic resistance, and parry rate. That's actually what Pry stands for, it's parry. Then we have luck. Interesting thing, there's only five possible values for luck, and I actually have them written down over on the right side. Ooh. Sorry, a bit of um, dizziness. So I actually have them written down here, but it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's it. Those are the only values that luck can possibly have. 
So I am really curious to find out what happens if I start giving it like a five value or a 270 value for that matter, because it is two bytes, just like everything else. Next up, on all of the saves that I've checked, it's a pair of zeros, which means that this is probably used to store something. If I'd have to make a guess, it's status. And I don't have a great way of testing that one out right now, because it's not like I could reliably inflict a status effect on me. Maybe some other time later, um, I'm planning on doing a video as to what the status effects do, like exactly what they do. So maybe I'll figure it out from there. But if I'd have to make a guess, this is status. Um, then we have your current XP. Once more, the game does not figure out your level based off of your current XP. Your level is being stored separately from XP. I'm wondering if they just had so much space in the save format that they just stored everything. Um, PlayStation 1 save file. So this little memory card here, this is a PlayStation 1 memory card. Uh, an official Sony PlayStation 1 memory card, I should say. Um, for those of you retro gamers, don't buy non-Sony memory cards for PS1. They were all horrible, and you will have data loss. Um, memory card replacements should be perfectly fine, though, at this point, as in, like, systems that don't use the standard Sony memory card format. I think there might be one that uses an SD card. Anyway, um, this holds 128 kilobytes of storage. And the way the PlayStation 1 works is that you have 15 blocks. A block is what's in computer terms is called a file allocation unit. Um, each file allocation unit on a PlayStation 1 would be 1 15th of the number? No, actually, it's 1 16th of the number. 1 16th of 128 would be 8. That is to say, each file allocation unit is 8 kilobytes. What file allocation units are in computing terms is the smallest segment of storage that you can store things on. The file allocation unit on your computer, the one that you're probably watching from this right now, regardless of whether you're watching this on an Android device or a modern PC, it's probably four kilobytes. That's fairly typical for today. It could be as low as 512 bytes. It could be as high as, I think 64 kilobytes is about as high as I will see it. And Windows, by default, will actually vary it based off of the size of your device. Because the more allocation units you have to keep track of, the harder it is for you to find information on your computer. Think about it this way. If I have a bookshelf that has a huge number of books, just thousands and thousands and thousands of books, it's going to be really hard for me to find any one given book. However, if I have the same number of bookshelves in the same physical space, fewer books, but each book is much, much larger, it's going to be easier for me to find an individual book. I may not be able to find the data in the book as quickly, but finding the books themselves are easy. The way a PlayStation 1 works, the file allocation unit is one block, which is 8 kilobytes. So this save right here is exactly 8 kilobytes, because there's no reason to take up less space. There's no way to actually save anything with less space. Not without doing some funky things, which um, Suikoden does, for instance. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. Sorry about that. Continuing on, we have what's a really interesting section. This is our equipment. So when I had taken this, the um, copy from here, I had actually unequipped all of my characters. That's part of the reason why you'll notice that everybody's strength stats, uh, strengths here, are the same as their ATP. That was one of the ways I was trying to find these numbers really quickly. Um, so I just unequipped all equipment. So as a result, FF, FF is null. There's no equipment there. It's an empty equipment spot. So I started varying things and I found out a lot of interesting things. This is the list of what you can have in any given item slot. And I started making this myself until figuring out that somebody else already did the work for me. Uh, link in the description for where I found the full list of items. They're doing it for like a um, Game Shark type of thing. Um, but the exact same item codes are relevant for memory cards. So this is what I did by manual. So for instance, you could have equipped a magic carrot. 
Interesting fact, though, is by having a magic carrot equipped, it gives you 50 vitality. So it appears as though... Or no, sorry, it should be 50 sword. I'm pretty sure that was a mistake. So the game, in its internal logic, is keeping track of how much MP an item would give you back in the same type of data format as it keeps how much sorcery you gain from a piece of equipment. Coincidentally, Ambrosia is a full heal for the entire party, and as a result, it maxes out your sorcery stat when equipped. So if you really wanted to cheese things, you equip Ambrosia. You can't in the game normally. The game only allows you to equip, you know, equipment for people. Uh, there's a few interesting other things. So, like, each of the apples give you one to their respective stats. That kind of makes sense that it's stored in the same type of data structure. There are some null spots. So, these are spots where there's no item in the game's code. So, if you have it equipped, it just appears blank. But it's not actually not equipping anything. There's something equipped there. It's just equipping blank. Um, from there, we have our usual set of equipment. Um, I had looked things up. This is the only item. I'm not actually sure where it comes from because I couldn't find it in guides anywhere, but I already have it. So I know that there's no like hidden piece of equipment for the le uh, for the right hand. So these, for instance, are all of the weapons that Rudy, or no, this is Jack's equipment. Yeah, these are all the weapons that Jack can use, right? No, those are the Rudy weapons. Those are the Jack weapons. And then we have Cecilia weapons. Um, which that was the point that I decided to stop looking and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, none of those are surprises, but there are a couple of other weird surprises. For instance, there's a diary. No idea what it does. The game just never had it coded in. Um, if you hold down the triangle button with the diary anywhere, it says to pause the journey. To me, that probably means it was meant to be a mobile save point. Uh, it's allowed to be used out of combat, but it doesn't do anything. And then we have the Sheriff Wop. I've got nothing as to what that was supposed to be. Um, it's listed as it can be used to arrest outlaws. And if you use it in combat, it locks up the game. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Um, there's also, in like this section that I cut off, there's actually equipment for people's left hand. It's apparently only equipable by Jack, and it looks like they just removed it from the game. Uh, so as though Jack was meant to be able to equip two weapons. It doesn't really do anything, though, but all the stuff's there. The more important thing that I wanted to get down, though, was this stuff. These are all of the runes in the game. The reason why I wanted to get it down is that I didn't know if I was missing any. And yes, I am. Well, I knew I was missing one. Uh, the Saint Centaur has the Saint Rune, which I obviously would not have because in my current game, we have not done Saint Centaur. Uh, in addition, we have the Sword Rune, I think. was No, it was the Castle Rune that I'm missing. And that's because I need to give the secret tools to Engineer Tom in Adelaide. Beyond that, I have all of the rest of the runes in the game other than the ones I can't have for plot reasons. And anything past the value C9 is null as far as I can tell. I went all the way up to D8. I gave up at that point because it was taking way too long. And that was also when I figured out there was a giant list of them anyway. My phone, why'd you make noise? Okay, it's just Google Pictures giving me more pictures of Boo. So yeah, I've been really busy in figuring out how Wild Arms works. But there's more. Oh boy, is there more. So I already mentioned the... Um, let me zoom in over to here and scroll down so you can see it. So I already mentioned that um, Byte 23, which is this one here, is the number of times that you saved. Byte 1AFC, which is way down. 1A... FC. Ah, too far.
one A F C and one B zero one boof. Um that right here. So it's um yep, O C and O F. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be this and I just missed typed anyway um these are actually the coordinates for where the proto wings at so if you noticed on the thumbnail of this very video i had the proto wings sitting in the mountains just parked so you can actually manipulate the coordinates for the proto wing i bet in here as well there's the coordinates for the golem and the coordinates for the sweet candy i'm not going to fiddle around with that until i actually have access to the sweet candy again which i guess that's a spoiler that i'm going to get it back i think i'm going to get it at least i can't remember anymore I might be mixing that up with uh, with Beyond the Beyond, where you can get Steiner back if you want. Um, yeah, so I have this is what I've been doing, and I wanted to just show you that type of thing, where there's all sorts of weird stuff that you can do in the save. And I'm to be fair, I am not done figuring things out. For instance, I want to know where the current status of Saint Centaur is at, because that has to be stored in the save since we haven't done it and the game hasn't glitched. So that's actually one of the let's analyzes is going to be the case of Saint Centaur. It's probably going to be toward the end of the game. Excuse me. Or whenever we actually get to the point where Saint Centaur fully glitches out. Anyway, I thought I would give you this little video for the time being. Um, I'm probably going to record a video of Wild Arms immediately after this. Unfortunately, without the music. That's sad. So yeah, um, I have a list of things that I still want to do. Uh, we're almost done with Jack and Cecilia's, uh, or Cecilia will be done with magic very soon. And I'm going to do an entire video on Cecilia's magic at that point. All I need is to get to Cecilia's tier four force ability. Once I get there, we can actually go exploring again for magic. And then we're going to do a video on the randomizer, and we're going to do a video on, um, whatchamacallit, um, dual cast. Dual cast is Cecilia's fourth level ability for reference, and there's a trick to it. And a lot of people don't realize what the trick is. So I remember way back when Wild Arms was first released, and going to places, various message boards and so on, talking about how terrible of an ability dual cast is. It's not terrible, it's actually freaking awesome. The problem is that the game is not very clear as to how to use it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this, well, I mean, it's 40, 38 minutes, so relatively quick Let's Analyze video. Uh, next video, we'll be going back to Wild Arms. I might progress plot. Maybe. Bye!